Hey ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keegan and welcome back to the channel. Now today's video is just going to be having a brief chat about the Sun, Goko Sun's trade period. Now it's nothing informal, I'm not going to have a lot of fancy graphics and I probably haven't written a script or anything for this. It's pretty, pretty much off the cuff, I'm just going to talk about what happened, what I think and how we're looking heading into the draft. Uh, so the first thing, talking about the people that left, so pretty much two people left, the two big ones were Prestia and Amira. Now, was it avoidable? Uh, not at this current point, not as far down as we were. Now, a year ago we could have done stuff, put stuff in place, changed a few things around and maybe we could have kept them, but as of trade period 2016, they were pretty much gone and had left, so there was no, no chance of recovery. But with players leaving the club, there is remuneration and getting draft picks or currency back into the club. And that is something I thought the Suns did really, really well. Uh, we essentially got pick six and a second round pick next year uh, for Prestia. And all we gave up was Prestia and a first, a second round pick this year. So we're stocking up again for next year, which is good to see. Uh, at the end of the trade period, we had three second rounders left for next year, which some could be used for going into deficit for uh, Brad Shear possibly, uh, and just having currency that we can trade out picks for players if need be, or we could just, if we bomb out again next year, which I really, really hope we don't, we could use that for drafting, uh, drafting more players to the club. The other leaving was Diego Ramirez, and this is the one that had a lot of people on edge. People on the, online, sp specifically Hawthorne supporters, weren't happy with the way Tony Cochran, the president, was going on about getting fair value for Amira, getting everything we wanted for him. Did we get everything we set out at the start for him? Probably not. However, I feel that from the situation, as bad as it probably got, we probably got fair value for it. Uh, we didn't get that... We didn't get that experienced player from Hawthorne that we were asking for, but we got a draft a pick 10, which is pretty good, and we got another second round pick for next year. So again, we've got some more currency building for the future. Now, people online were pretty much going on and on about how Tony Crocker's ruining the trade period. It's his fault that the club isn't trading. And to be honest, I can understand, but in the end, you have to understand he's a mouthpiece. He's not the person doing the deals. He's not on the phone to the other list managers at the different clubs talking about bringing players in, getting rid of players. He's there as a mouthpiece for the Suns, and I'm really happy that he's there. It gives us a bit of force in in the landscape. It gives us someone that actually gives a damn about the club because, let's be honest, no one in Melbourne gives two dams about the Suns. And it's good to have someone there uh, like Tony who's standing up for the club He's making sure he's making sure the club isn't a developmental uh, developmental team for the rest of the AFL, and he's making sure that people are paying fair price for players, and that they know that we're not ones to be pushed around and pushed over. So you can argue he's a, he's a bit he's he has tendencies that he grinds up against people. I'll put it out there: he can be a bit of a dick sometimes, but. He's he's standing up. He's passionate about Gold Coast Suns. He's passionate about my club, so I can't really complain. As far as other trade news goes, we brought in another two, uh, three players, I should say. Uh, in a very com uh, complex deal, we got rid of two second rounders and basically got in handily with some pick swaps between Port, Brisbane, and us. So basically, we ended up giving, I think it was 22 and 30 for Pierce Handley, which I think is a really, really solid pick up. He's always torn us apart in Q clashes, so at the very least, we're not going to be ripped apart by him in Q clashes. He's actually going to be on our side. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with I'm pretty happy with that. He's not an inside grunt player that we sort of desperately needed, but he's a bit of class on the outside. He's quick. He's a good kick, and he's someone that can if he can deliver it into fifty and hit the hands of Tom Lynch, that would be a major plus. He's a good kick and. To be honest, our team isn't full of amazing kicks, so it's good to have him. He'll be delivering with a bit of class there, and I can't wait to see him in Suns colours next year. Jared Witts was another one. Uh, I was sort of here or there on Jared Witts. I, I like, I like what I've seen from him in the past. He's 209 centimetres, so it very rarely is he going to be beaten in the ruck contest in the tap outs. 
but he doesn't offer a hell of a lot around the ground. He's okay below his knees, but he's not going to be pinch hitting forward, taking a few grabs and kicking a few goals. So whether he replaces Nichols and Curry, we'll wait and see. It's good competition. We have three pretty solid rocks in Curry, Nichols, and Wits battling for the one rock spot. So I'm not too not too bothered by that. It probably means Brooksbury's uh, card is stamped, unfortunately. He's probably, he's out of contract. He's probably going to be delisted at the end of the season. Uh, at the end of the period, sorry, which is quite sad because he, he, he was a try, but he just didn't have the build and he wasn't big enough to play ruck in the AFL. Jared Lyons was the last one, and it's, and in the end, we got him for a pretty big steal. I think it was a pick in the mid-40s, so it wasn't a huge pick for us. In the scheme of things for us, it wasn't didn't really matter too much, but he's going to be proof to be a really solid player. Adelaide people seem to be very disappointed to lose him. He, was a good, he played 20 games for the Crows, and the Crows were a pretty solid finals outfit. So he is that grunt player that gets in and under the packs, and he dishes it out. He averages over 20 disposals a game, and he... From what, I, from what I read online, people speaking, he averages a goal a game too, which I cannot complain about. He's going to be a chock out in there, the middle for Swallow and Ablett. So he's going to be doing a bit more of that grunt work and he's going to be dishing it off to our faster outside players like a Pierce Handley and like a Harbrow and so on. So at the end of it all, in the wash-up, we lost Prestia and Amira and all our second and second, third and third round picks. And in the end, we have ended up with picks 4, 6, 8, and 10, Wits, Lions, and Hanley, which overall I think is a pretty good trade deal. Now, I've been looking at some of the media coverage in Melbourne and some media people in Melbourne, and they don't agree. They think it's a bit of a loss, a lose situation for the Suns. But considering uh, Amira and Presti were always going to leave, and we couldn't do anything about that, we did our best to replace them as best we could. And hopefully, 4, 6, 8, and 10 will get us bows. It should get us shit, and it should also get us some quality other players, maybe like a uh, Scrimshaw or a Taranto, if that's how you pronounce his name. So there's a couple of good draft picks, kids, that could come in and could come straight into the team coming 2017. So we'll wait and see for that. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of the Suns trade period. Do you think it could have been better? Do you think of any improvements that could have been made? Uh, realistic improvements that could be made. Obviously, I would have loved to keep Prestia and Amira and bring in Fife and bring in Selwood and bring in Dangerfield, but that's not obviously not realistic. But anyway, do let me know in the comments below if there's any realistic changes you would make to the Suns trade period. Well, the fixtures released this Thursday, so I'm going to release a video after the fixtures release. I'm going to give a talk through, and I'm going to give a very, very, very early season season preview of where I think the Suns can win games, where I think the Suns could lose some games. Well, I hope you enjoyed, guys. Make sure you do like the video, subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos on this channel. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.